Chevre. Hello, a good night of Shabbos. I hope everyone is gesund, stark, and freilich, begash mis I hope everyone is healthy, strong, and happy physically and spiritually. Last week I didn't make a video. I wasn't feeling well. Baruch Hashem, today I'm better. Hoidul adinoi ki teiv, ki leilam chazdei. Last week, this past week was my birthday, so I want to give a shel v'idol HaKadosh Baruch Hu for all the unbelievable kindness that has bestowed upon me in the past and in Yisrael Hashem for the future. B'toiv anirev anigla, katointi mikol hachasadim mikol ha-emes, asher esisa esavdecho, moidani lefonecho, melechai v'kayom, shechzarte b'dishmosi b'chem l'rabbi monasecho, Hashem, I'm eternally grateful to you. And thank you to no end. <coughs> Today is Erev Parshas Shlach. We're going to talk about a thought for the week and the connection to a very great day coming up next week. Chof Ches Sivan. It's going to turn 80 years. The 80th year anniversary of the Rebbe and the Rebbetzin's arrival to America and the day which is the day we celebrate the Rebbe's survival from Nazi war-torn Europe. <coughs> but first, we'll start with the Posse Kintilim, which I think exactly conveys this idea. And that's in Kapitel Samachalef, which the Posse says, Miktsei ha'oretz elecha ekro batev libi betsui yorim imeni sancheni from the end of the land you I call, when my heart grows faint, to a rock which is too high for me, lead me. So we say, from the end of the land, from the furthest place, which is, as the Rebbe explains, the idea of America. There's Matan Torah, the whole idea of Judaism, is to make this world a dwelling place for Hashem. And America, without going into it at length now, is considered the Chatzik Kadar HaTachtoin, a lower part of the world. So as long as Judaism was thriving in Europe and in Israel, we really weren't fulfilling and accomplishing the ultimate mission, which was to take the lower, lower parts of the world, more Tachtoinim, Deeper tachtoinim, lower tachtoinim, and elevate that too. So dafka precisely, once Torah and Mitzvah, the Jewish world, arrived to America and began elevating that land, mikzeh ha'aretz, then we're really accomplishing the ultimate purpose and bringing Mashiach. I live in Australia, and the Rebbe said Australia is tachn shebe tachtoinim. So... I feel especially this posik, We are really far away. And we really always have to attach ourselves and connect ourselves and ask for help to be successful. When it comes to Pasha Shlach, everyone knows the famous question. And I actually discussed it last year. I would urge you to look at Daily Inspiration number 72 because I'm going to speak a content which I spoke then but this time we'll elaborate and add a bit differently. But much of what I'm going to say now, the kernel was said then. So Moshe Abeno sends the spies. Everyone knows the story. Hand-picked emissaries. And he sends them on a mission to scout Eretz Yisrael. And they come back. They give a dismal report, etc. <coughs> so the Pesach says, V'yishlach Yisrael Moshe mimid ba'poran al pi Hashem. Kulam Anoshim Roshi Bnei Yisraelim. They were all distinguished men, heads of the Yidden. So they were the leaders. And as it says, Shlach Anoshim. So use the word Anoshim before too. And Rashi on the words Kulam Anoshim here says Kol Anoshim Shabemikra Loshik Shivas. Whenever we say men, men of distinction, Ba'Oisi Sho Kshedim Hoyu. And at that time, they were kosher. They were all right. So then the question is, what went wrong? Why before were we calling them kshayrim? And then later, they failed so dismally. 
catastrophically. So maybe we could say, and this is what I said last year, it's not 100%, but it's, but it's a vart. It's a, it's a, it's a, in a kudu, which I believe you could say, and I believe it's true. But first, when we speak about our connection to a Moshe Rabbeinu, what does the Pesach say? Vayamino b'Hashem uba Moshe Abdei. They didn't believe in the Ebeshta and in Moshe. So when we talk about Moshe, we say Vayamino. The same thing the Pesach says, B'cho yamino le'elo. It says the Yidin will believe <coughs> in Moshe forever. So we connote, we connect, we associate the word emuna, faith, to our connection to the leader, to the Moshe Rabbeinu. And outside of Chabad, in all other circles, we have a word called emunas tzaddikim, faith in tzaddikim. But Chabad usually we speak about askashas, bonding and connecting to the tzaddik. We don't use emunas <coughs> tzaddikim so much, but actually the word is emunas tzaddikim, faith in the tzaddik. What is the point of the faith in the tzaddik? And the answer maybe is because there could be two ways how we look at the tzaddik. We could look at the tzaddik maybe and say, you know what? He's better than us. He's higher than us. He's more talented than us. He's holier than us. But within limits. Relative. Measurable. Or we say if we're dealing with a tzaddik and especially the ultimate tzaddik, the Nasi Adair, the Moshe Rabbeinu, then Vayamino, he's not a bit better, he's not even a lot better, he's a different, altogether kind, completely Beinarich, it's a leap of a different caliber realm, world altogether. And that's the difference. Ula Yesh maybe you could say, that at that time they were loyal disciples. They saw Moshe as somebody who was greater, much more knowledgeable, could be their teacher, knew enough Torah more than any one of them, and all of them put together, etc., etc. <coughs> but they didn't have that level of all or nothing. Moshe Rabbeinu could do anything. As we spoke last year on Vayas Kolif, see what Rashi says over here. There are no limits whatsoever. So even if we go into Eretz Yisrael and we encounter the land of the giants, and we have a question in general, as the Rebbe explains the Chilik Dalad, Lakuti Sichas, how are we going to bring the higher the nature in nature? We understand if we want to go the supernatural channel, we'll go that way. We understand. If you want to go the natural channel, we'll go that way. But to combine them, to make this fusion of opposites, which seems like it goes against all the laws of physics, it has no logic. It's beyond. We can't even really describe it. Who says Moshe could do that? Moshe has some limits. And that was the mistake. Who didn't fail? Kolev. What does it say about him? He was mishtateach al kivri avos. He went to heaven. He prayed by the avos. Now the word is used mishtateach because the word mishtateach is because in the olden days the custom was when you went to pray at the gravesite of the four holy tzaddikim, you prostrated yourself, you fell flat upon the site, and you nullified yourself. It was an act of submission and yielding and surrender to the higher power, to the higher authority. But what is the idea? Chassidus explains the concept of Pishut Yodayim Veraglayim as we speak about in the Maimorim of Chassidus when it talks about Rosh Hashanah is that you make yourself flat out. Your brain, your superior part of yourself and your feet, the lower part of yourself are exactly equal. In other words, you, in relation to that higher level, are nothing. Your head and your feet are exactly equal in relation to that level. That's how much that level is completely incomparably greater than you. And only such level of bittel, 
dedication, devotion, and loyalty to that which is totally greater than yourself, that level of bittel will ensure and guarantee that you'll end up carrying out your mission and your service to Hashem and to the tzaddik properly. Because you need that level of bittel. And that's what the other shvatim did not have. <coughs> they had a bittel. I'll be seichel. They had a limited level of nullification. A limited level of devotion. But not all or nothing. Even against seemingly insurmountable odds. Even against odds that defy the laws of physics. That they didn't have. And this is why in general, we know that when it comes to tzaddikim, all tzaddikim, even different rebbes, we say, Adineinu meireinu verabeinu. We proceed first, Adineinu, then meireinu verabeinu. First you have to know the Rebbe is the master. The Rebbe is the boss. The Rebbe is the king. The Rebbe is the ultimate authority. Total. And therefore you're worried about that. You think about that. And that makes sure you'll do the right thing. Then we see the Rebbe as Meireinu Verabbeinu. <coughs> the other spies, they might have seen Moshe as Meireinu Verabbeinu. But they didn't see the Adi Neinu. And this is connected to the Pirkei Havis of this week, Yeshleima. What does the Mishnah say in, te- in, in, in Mishnah Tess of Pedic Gimel? Reb Chanin ben Daisayma, kol sheyiras chetek kedemes lechachmosoi, chachmosoi miskayemes. But v'chol shechachmosoi kedemes liyiras chetek, ain chachmosoi miskayemes. Which means... Anyone whose fear of sin precedes his wisdom, his wisdom will endure. But anyone whose wisdom precedes his fear of sin, his wisdom will not endure. <coughs> and this you could say, again, similarly, was the mistake of the Miraglim and the difference with Kolov and Yeshua. By them was not Yiras Chetei Kedemes Lechachmosei. It was Chachmosei Kedemes Liras Chetei. You know what Yiras Chetei means? You're, you're, you're worried. What's your obsession? That you shouldn't step wrong. You shouldn't make a mistake. You should be 1,000% loyal and true to the mission. That means Yiraschete. Like, You have to be worried to stay true to the mission. At all times, that's the overriding awareness and consciousness. That means, We don't need your, your advice sometimes. We don't need your brains. Of course we do. But if you first have the overriding consciousness of, I have to do the right thing. I have to make sure to stick true to what Adineinu wants. That means, That means, but you know what happens when then you look at yourself, you say, Rashi B'nai Yisrael, I'm a leader. I'm a Rosh Hashiva. <coughs> I'm a big scholar. I have a high IQ. I'm a, I'm a big leader. I have a lot, of, a lot of years of service and experience. You know what? I know I have a teacher who knows more than me, but I also, I'm a tzir. So they looked at themselves and they gave themselves too much importance. Importance. They've lost their sense of proportion. They allowed their chachmasai to precede the yiras chetai, and then they lose their chachmasai. Everything goes haywire. Everything goes warped and twisted and wrong, and brings down one of the worst sins of the Jewish nation, Hashem Yirach. I'd like to finish with two stories that bring out this point in a way. One story is a famous story that the Rebbe brings in the Kutis Sichas Chelik Beis, Yutshvat in the Esophis. He says, Two people, two students, once came to the Rebbe and they said, What made the Fidik Rebbe special over other Jewish leaders? So the Rebbe said, 
alle gedeelte mom gaat in je mijuche de wat ze hem getan. De rebbe had over zich verloren met alle inyonen. Van de hechte, als hij wegil in rozen, die rozen van tere sachsides, bis gor poshe te inyonen, als hij weer nog eens tvillen shabbes, en hij viel ook een gashmis dik in inyonen. En hij nou, ze zijn gewend, ik ben gegeven, begol, dat ze moeten. So the Rebbe answered, all the leaders were outstanding in one feature, in one dimension, in one aspect, in learning, in piety, in prophecy, and in, 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 they were talking about making hospitals, they were talking about uh, making free, free loans, in different areas. Each one had one area in which they excelled. <coughs> but the Fried Rebbe, he was totally involved in every single area. In what area was he outstanding? All areas. Unlimited supply. There's nothing he did not excel at. From the highest of the highest realms, like revealing the deepest of the deepest of the deepest secrets of Kabbalah and Hasidus, the innermost secrets of Torah. In other words, the deepest, deepest, highest levels of spirituality and holiness. Till the simplistic things of getting people to put on film and to keep Shabbos, running kindergartens, making sure women have a mikveh. So from the highest of the high to the so-called the lowest of the low, the most practical, concrete. The Fried Rebbe excelled in every single area and in every single area was a total involvement. That's what the Fried Rebbe, that's what the Rebbe described the Rebbe as, what made him different than other leaders. And when he said this story, in the unedited version, he added, this is not in the Kutisichas, he says that this question was asked to me by two students. And when they heard my response, they took out of their pockets a notebook, a notepad, and they wrote down what I said. And they said, oh, now we know what a Rebbe is. And the Rebbe, like, humorously said, oh, they've captured the Rebbe on paper. Like... Sarcastically saying, hello, you think you could capture a Rebbe on paper? In other words, with this Rebbe's response, we have the whole concept that we spoke before. Are we talking about a Rebbe, which means that you excel in one area, but there are some limits? Or are we speaking about such a level that's beyond description? What is the definition? No definition. For you... The sky is not the limit. That's what the level of a Moshe Rabbeinu is. And then we come to the one of the most famous stories of all time, which I think also beautifully brings out this point. And it starts with the Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe. When they came to arrest him, the first time he made a quick exit so that he heard the soldiers were approaching. He made a quick exit so as not to be there when they come, so they shouldn't be able to arrest him. So Shmuel Munkis was a very celebrated, illustrious chassid, when he heard about that, that the Frida Gerebbe made a quick exit, so to speak. Because <coughs> it seemed like he was afraid to be arrested and put into prison and go to prison. And Shmuel Munkis told al Rebbe, I don't understand. Memonov Shech. Mr. Rebbe. Can curl can the nish nemen? When I do this nit ki rebbe, van us kan the breit kan the weg nemen. Taiva seilam hazef on the taste of the yid. The shmuel munkus told out rebbe. I don't understand. Either you're a rebbe, and then a bullet can't take you. In other words, what are you worried about? Nothing's going to happen to you. No power of this planet Earth could harm you in any way, even if you were shot with a bullet. It would bounce off, so to speak. And if you're not a Rebbe, how did you have the audacity to deprive so many thousands of Jews of the pleasure of this world? You're a rabbi, you're a spiritual leader, and you preach and teach about focusing on higher things in life than materialism and mundane trivialities. But if that's the truth, so either you are or you aren't. If you are, a bullet can't take you. And if you aren't, then you shouldn't be there preaching and leading us to great spiritual heights when you don't really 
have the goods, as we said before. So here we see from these words that look at Shmuel Munkas's Emunah Sadiqim. Since the Rebbe is a Rebbe, if the Alter Rebbe is a Rebbe, a bullet can't take him. If someone asks you, does that mean a limited belief in the Rebbe or an unlimited belief in the Rebbe? It means an unlimited belief in the Rebbe. Maybe she should help. But this is how we should prepare ourselves. For Chav Chesivin, wherever you are, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Melbourne, Sydney, Tel Aviv, Caracas, Peru, Chile, and whoever you are, bringing the Ebesh to there, fulfilling your shlichas of the Rebbe. You should remember that the Rebbe is a level that has no limits. That's what it means. And as long as you're a Kolev, you're ready to nullify yourself and submit, yield 100% to the Rebbe, to the level which is totally higher than you, then you will see the success that you too will gain success, which is comparable to your level of talent and faculties, and all blessings will come your way. So, we should see the Rebbe this year, even before Chav Ches Sivan, and we should all be true to our mission, and this will bring the Gula Mitzvah Shleim, or take it from Yad Mamish, posting from my home, Be'ez Hashem Yisbarech, your man in Melbourne.